and thanks for joining me for this flip video of Tonic Studios craft kit number 35, Rustic Rose. This is the last color trend for 2020, and it's a really pretty sort of dusty, vintagey rose. Um, here is my first card. It's going to be my flat card, and I started off with a matte layer of the Craft Perfect uh, textured weave card and I die cut the shadow layer of the word remember from it three times and the stamp set that's included in this kit is pretty unique I think it actually has a number of phrases that you can combine with the word die cuts that come in the kit of which there are three and the stamps though there are several phrases that go with each word and several different fonts in each of those um, sets of phrases. So for any particular phrase, you'll see it repeated, I think, four times in each of the different styles of fonts. And that's pretty neat because there are a, a good variety of different styles of fonts, uh, tall and skinny fonts, scripty fonts, um, you name it. And so you can really pick and choose the one that uh, suits whatever style of card you're creating. So I thought that was pretty neat. And for each of the word die cuts, there are uh, a number of different phrases that you can use to complete that sentiment, either um, using it before the word or after the word. So for example, I'm using the word remember and they've got sentiments like a day to remember or remember when dot dot dot. So very versatile, very um, unique set. And what I'm doing is initially I thought I was going to use my stamping platform to stamp all of the phrases at the same time, but it seemed like I couldn't get a really good impression because I don't think all of the stamps are the same thickness or depth, and so they weren't all hitting the paper at the same time, and so I couldn't get a really even stamp. So I just did it individually, and I'm using some of the embossing powder that comes in the kit, and I wasn't uh, I was a little bit surprised by the outcome because the embossing powder is um, a pearlized powder, so it's got a little bit of glitter and sparkle to it. I don't know why, but I thought what it was going to do was just add a pearlized sort of finish to whatever color cardstock you were embossing it onto, but it's actually white pearlized, so it's a white embossing powder, but it has that pearlized finish, so um, it doesn't really pearlize your card, so to speak, which is what, for some reason, that's what I thought it would do, but, so this isn't exactly as I envisioned it in my mind. I was hoping for a more subtle background, but I think it still works. Um, so here I'm going to inlay some of um, the die uh, cuts from the word and I'm using both of the mirrored card mirror cardstock that comes in the kit one of them is I think it's in that line of iridescent mirror because if you kind of hold it at different angles you'll see different um, colors of the rainbow in there even though on the whole it it's a really nice pink uh, color and then this one in the middle is, I think they're um, more standard high gloss mirror card, which is really pretty. I thought having a combination of both of them would um, be a little bit more fun and interesting rather than using the same one three times. And so this is like a really simple card, but um, I feel like it's, it's pretty interesting because of the combination of using the stamped background and the die cut word. And um, one of the things that by the time I got to the third one, I realized would make my life easier is to pop the first and the last segment into the word. Um, and then that way you can line up both ends when you um, try to get the rest of the uh, word inlaid back in. And because I had to die cut, 
the word remember so many times, and especially out of that really lovely mirror card, I wanted to make sure that I used that all up instead of just um, throwing it in the bin. So here I'm just showing different ways that you can kind of use all of the pieces in your die cut. So the combination of using the shadow layers and some plain white and or black cardstock just to make the most out of not just the negative portion of the die cut, which is how it's meant to be used. It, I think it's meant to cut out a negative image, but you can also, like I showed in my first card, um, use the positive pieces that drop out of that and inlay that back in as well. So a lot of different ways to combine and use these dies to get different looks. And of course, anytime I use specialty card, I do like to use every every scrap of it as much as I can anyways. And so now I've got quite a few um, sentiments already made up for the next time I need to um, uh, make cards. So it's can often be handy to have these pieces already assembled and just gets you um, that much further along in your card making. And I'm even though black cardstock didn't come in the kit, I did find that black and all of these shades of pink are um, a really effective combination. So here I'm um, just showing how I did the flower shaping for um, the flower uh, dies that came in the kit. And I might need to watch a tutorial on how other people did this because I couldn't get a really... Um, effective shaping where the petals seem like they're um, going from small to large as as you look at it from kind of top to bottom because the um, the individual petals do come in two sizes but they're rather small compared to the die that cuts two petals at a time so there's like a big jump in size between um, the larger die and then the smaller individual petals. So I, I didn't feel like I could get a really good sort of um, gradual change in petal size. Um, but it does create these really large flowers. And I don't know if it's because it's so large, but I did also feel like I had to use quite a few layers of the die cuts to make it feel like a really full flower. But I did like being able to die cut some of the petals out of the pattern paper because I thought that added some interest to the flowers because um, I couldn't really get a very realistic look. So I went for a more abstract look. <laughs> so with this easel card, I uh, did a partial die cut of the frame so that when it stands up, you get this really nice um decorative edge and what I really like about this frame is that you can really orient it any way you want. There isn't um, like an up or a down. You can really just turn this any way you want. And one of the things that I learned when, <laughs> when I first made this first die cut is that this set of frame die dies is a little bit different from what I'm used to with tonic. And that is that the fr the decorative frame, it actually does cut the full frame. It cuts the outer edge and the inner edge, which I didn't expect because usually with their decorative frames like this, there's a verso die that only cuts you know the decorative um, aspect of the frame, leaving it in you know that design in your card, and then you get separate dies to cut the outer edge and the inner aperture, if you wanted to have you know a full frame. Uh, I just assumed that this <laughs> set of frame dies worked the same, and um, so I combined the outer edge with the inner decorative uh, frame die and I um, was a little bit surprised when <laughs> I got this really thin <laughs> um, 
border because I had combined the two, the shadow layer and the uh, frame layer. But that's okay because um, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I really like to do die cut inlaying whenever I cut some anything out of pretty cardstock. So having that really thin uh, brown pearlescent uh, outline just gives me a little bit of an inverted look from uh, my first card, which I also think is really effective. And all I did here was when, after I did the die cut, I actually put, before releasing the paper from the die, I pressed it into this little sheet of press and seal. And that way all of these little pieces get stuck to the press and seal, making it um, easier to keep track of. I can be assured that, you know, I haven't lost a piece, but then also it makes it really easy to figure out what pieces go where. And then this is a really nice effect because it, uh, everything is flush since I've inlaid the pieces back into just a regular white frame. So you get a different look out of it. And even though it's a little bit of extra work, at least this way you're using, you know, all of your um, pretty cardstock. So this is um, my interactive card. And all I did here was I just put a strip of double-sided adhesive tape on a piece of scrap cardstock and poured glitter all over it. And you get that really nice glitter um, strip of uh, accent piece and the glitter does come in this kit along with the green confetti that I just poured into my shaker and I'm using the tag dies uh, to create my shaker because the tag die has that really decorative pretty embossed uh, corner to it but it also has two additional dies for you to cut mats and layers out of and so I just used one of those um, matte layers uh, die to cut out my aperture for the front piece of my frame. And I didn't really show it up close, but on the back panel of my tag, I just used some of the Nouveau drops that came in the kit and did some smushing of the drops to just create a nice subtle background. And I sprinkled a little bit of that pink glitter just to um, have it tie in with the accent strip that uh, I created. And I did, I did supplement the shaker with my own um, seed beads because I like for my shakers to make noise. So, um, so that's why I did that. And this is actually another layered card. So I made them a little bit out of order, but here I'm using again some of that beautiful mirror cardstock and I did kind of gut the center of it out. And for this decorative panel, I used the uh, textured weave card and again, just laid down some strips of varying widths of double-sided adhesive tape. And then I covered the whole thing with the uh, Sunkissed Copper gilding flakes that come in the kit. And um, it may seem like you get such a little pot of it, but that's a lot. It goes a long ways, uh, these... Um, gilding flakes. You don't really need much. And once you apply it onto your um, project, whatever flakes come off, you can always put that back in the pot. For this background, I used, um, and this was actually the reason why I kept this kit, because I've never used these shimmer powders before, and I wanted to try it out. So what you do is you kind of dust the powder onto your card. At least that's, this is one way of doing it and this is how I made this panel. So I just sprinkled that on and then I spritzed it with a fine misting uh, water bottle. And then you just watch the colors bloom and move and what's really amazing is that there are different colors in that even though overall it's a green tone but there's some blues and there's some yellows. It's really really pretty. This is my last card. It's going to be my pop-up card. And I had to, um, I was brainstorming for a while because one of the things I wanted to do was create a tag that then the card recipient could actually detach and use. And so what I came up with was um, one of these 
interior pop-up cards where um, usually I would make it a spinner, but instead I'm just going to hang my tag from the aperture. And you can see my tag is already created there. And what I did with that is I used some again some of that brown pearlescent card again. And I used my Tombow um, multi-glue, which if you just leave it to dry, it actually dries tacky. So it's a little bit sticky to the touch even after it's dried, which makes it perfect for then um, doing techniques like this where I just put the gilding flakes over the uh, dried glue and there was just enough tackiness to hold on to the gilding flakes. So what I did was basically just kind of used my um, Tombow glue like a pen and just drew in and outlined right over the embossed areas. You can just follow the lines or the edges of your embossed image and um, kind of give some highlights to that design. So sorry I'm working a little off camera but it took me a while to, to tie this bow. I didn't give myself quite enough ribbon <laughs> but um, I did tie it and with the idea that you can untie it and, and then use it. One of the things that I like to do with uh, the Nouveau Drops is actually to apply them to just a uh, paper liner from my double-sided adhesive tape. They dry perfectly and then they, um, they are easy to remove. And then this way I can kind of pick and choose and move them around my card because I, I'm always worried when I go direct to card that one, I won't get exactly the shape that I like, and two, um, I am always a little bit um, indecisive about where to put the drops. <laughs> but you might have noticed a couple different shades on my um, little sheet there because I did have some other colors that were in the pink or copper range and I wanted to see how they compared. So Copper Penny was on that sheet and Antique Rose. And the Heritage Rose is the color that comes in this kit, which is new to the Rustic Rose trend. And it is a very distinct color from um, those other two that I just mentioned. So here's a recap of all of the cards that I made. This was a super fun kit to work with. I will definitely be dipping back into this. And I do love that a lot of the word uh, dies can also be used for my mini album. So the word remember is really perfect for a mini album. Special is, I think, the only one that I didn't use in my cards. And um, I forgot to mention the dream that I just had there. I did make that into a shaker with the confetti, but the open the aperture of the word dream is just so small that it's really hard to appreciate that as a shaker. Um, I think the tag turned out much, much better as a shaker. But very versatile kit, love all the colors, and I had a lot of fun. Um, this might be one of my favorites just because I like the idea of having a tag there that then almost becomes a gift in and of itself that's built into the card. So, um, and I love all the detail in this embossing. You can definitely get a much uh, deeper emboss if you run your tag die with an embossing sandwich, um, which I didn't do in this case because I knew I was going to try that gilding effect. Well, I hope that you enjoyed these cards and um, thanks so much for joining me. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you get a little notification anytime I release a new video. Thanks so much. Happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.